Hello, hello, how are we all? Oh, Campbell here from Autodidactic and doing another stream. We did a stream the other day and it sort of uh, went a little awry, so I thought I'd do another one today. So hope you're all doing well. Hello, Hippie, how are you going? Here as always. And Anara, hello, how are you? Um, all right, I'll just talk a little bit uh, while we wait for some people to jump on board. Um, and then we'll get into some pictures. I've got some old pictures. What have we got? Seattle and uh, an interactive map of Perth that is full of some old pictures as well. So, um, all right, not many people on at the moment. This has happened the last couple of streams. Very strange that I think it's the YouTube count. It goes down and tells me there's no one here. But 20 of you here now. We've got James Anderson, South Florida. All right south of where i am at the moment thanks for joining us how are you going redneck rebel hey hey how are you doing good to see you as always aaron mayhew from oregon hello hello kimmy kimmy of course uh there you go the little hat made me the and kelly uh a top hat we've got a top hat each we also got some gloves and another hat um so if you want to check out Kimmy's Wares, uh, she's on Instagram at Rock Pops with a Z. Uh, go and check it out. Um, it's all, you know, it's a little shop. She sells it all. So if you want one, go and, and have a look. Um, Heath Taylor, South Carolina. Ah, nice. You're in the state under me. I'm in North Carolina. Um, it's a bit chilly here today. Nice blue sky, but it's like 15 degrees Celsius, which is very cold. Um, Stuart, hello. Um, to the land down under, are you in Australia or from um, wherever you are? Hello, good to see you. Linnea, 2264, hello. Tracy Mayers from England, how are you going? Miss Angie from Cabo, where is Cabo? I haven't heard of Cabo before, but welcome. Patty. Katie, Katie <clears throat> from Scotland, excuse me. <clears throat> um, who else have we got here? O Ob, O B Z R V from McMinnon <laughs> McMinnville. Is that Oregon? <clears throat> I'm guessing that's Oregon. Stuart Stevenson, another one from Scotland. Hello. Oh, Mexico. Miss Angie, Cabo, Mexico. Wow. <clears throat> Must be nice and warm in Mexico. How is it down there? I've heard it's it's a fairly good place to get away from the cabal, <laughs> live a bit freer. Uh, Plutonil from Barcelona, Spain. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me. And I might just get into it, right? We've got, we've got a few of you here. So to start with, I thought we would have a look. Uh, at some pictures I found of Seattle during the regrade. And uh, is it going to work? Come on. Okay. It's working. Yay. Um, regrades. Re regrading went on in, in quite a few different places. Uh, hello, Conga from Germany. Hello, Flat Earth Andy. Oh, thank you very much. Or is Scotland in Mexico? I don't know. That would be strange. Um, yeah, regrading. They did regrading, what they call regrading, in, in quite a few places. I've really only found it in the USA. But basically what they were doing was regrading, right? They were, they were changing the levels of the cities. And so this is, these are all from Seattle. So this is 1914. Steam shovel digs on Marion Street during the 6th Avenue regrade. And this is what they were doing. You can see there's a house up here and a big building up here. I'm not sure where the foundations are for this. Maybe behind this mud wall. Um, and they were basically changing all the levels. And there's literally pictures. You might see somewhere that they would go to a house and they would say that they, they were digging the dirt from underneath and they would lower the house down. It's very strange stuff. Uh, here we have like a wooden train and i'm not sure what's going on here 
There might be train tracks in here, but it looks like it's just sitting on a bit of track. Maybe that's the end of the track. The end of the line, um, got a an old broken wheelbarrow here and a few bits and pieces, but this went on uh, in quite a few different cities. Here's another one. Now this one, what do you think's going on here? Look at this bridge, right? It, it seems to, you know, be a bit short, right? And it seems that, it, it you know, its foundations may be way down under the ground. So is this actually, this regrading, is this actually clearing out the mud from some kind of inundation? What do you think? Because when we look around, we've got lot, lots of rubble here, right? We've got bits of wood and, and rock and that looks like a brick. Um, not sure what this is here, but, you know, some more brick-looking things. You know, and, and you can see the rubble coming down here. Uh, smashed up rocks or bricks so but this bridge right it looks like it should be a lot taller right looks like the pillars should be down here somewhere so they call this regrading this was obviously 1912 using their steam shovels but what do you think do you think this may actually be clearing out the mud and and you know regrading re leveling the city so they could you know start to use it again and, and they didn't Clearly, they didn't go all the way to the bottom because we still have, you know, mud flooded, what we're calling mud flooded buildings. And here's another shot. So you can see the level of mud that they have taken down. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can see in the background here, all these houses up on the hill. And look at this big chunk. Right? Just sitting there and a house down below. So it looks like, and again, I don't, you know, this house doesn't look like it was completely buried and they've uncovered it, who knows, but um, it may have been lowered down. Like they tell us some of them were lowered down. I'm not sure if that's possible or not, but they're pretty interesting photos, right? Like they're getting in here and they're completely giving new levels to the whole city. And, I mean, this is 1912 and it's pretty built out. You can see some big structures up on the hill here. Not sure. You can't see these whole buildings. They could be could be newer, could be older. <clears throat> uh, here we go again. So see this house here. See how you can see underneath it. This is one of the houses that they they say that they were lowering down. So basically, they say that it would have been sitting up on a level like this, and they get in and they dig underneath and slowly lower it down to a different level. I mean, I'm not sure if that's even possible. Got another house here sitting in front of this big, you know, mound of dirt. And then, again, this is 1912. We've got some pretty big multi-story buildings in the background here, right, in Seattle. So we can see the level of tech. It's all steam shovels, hand shovels, wheelbarrows, not many workers. Oh, and this, okay, so this is, um, they used to use it, for mining as well. It's called hydro mining. This is basically a big water hose. And this is what they were using as well to lower these houses, right? They'd wash away the dirt. So this was a big part of what was going on. These actually got outlawed because they were doing so much damage when people were using them for mining. They were just destroying whole hills and and things like that. Just what's that? That's a little interesting. I don't know if that's buried or not. Um, and here we go again, right? These houses, man, just sitting up. Look at that. I mean, that's kind of crazy, right? And it seems to be sitting on mud. We've got a pile of, I'm not sure if that's wood or bricks down there. And even down the bottom here, you can see we've got all this mud and the house level's way up here. But down here we have a paved road. All right, so again, it's looking like they were uncovering things, like they were actually getting rid of the mud that had gone, you know, it, it covered everything basically during some kind of deluge. So it, these are very interesting pictures, I find. I haven't really worked out exactly what's going on here. And not many workers, right? <laughs> you think there'd be workers everywhere doing this. Um, and this could just be mud layering. I'm not sure. It could be 
some kind of foundation. They've shored up the little balcony here with some long bits of wood, but where are the foundations for these houses? They, they look wooden, so that, you know, they wouldn't need huge foundations, but I mean, pretty weird, right? Pretty weird. So this is 1905, seven years beforehand. So they were doing this for quite a while. The Denny Hotel, later called Washington Hotel, stands on the south summit of Denny Hill before being torn down, of course, right? Love to tear these down, but look at this place. And this one you can see, this is the level of the mud. You can see this clearly goes down lower. And, I've, you know, this would need a huge foundation. So it's going down. looks like there's more foundations down here. And then the rest is covered by mud. Then we have these houses going down the hill, you know, San Francisco style. And, you know, if you look at these, these big masonry, very well built, you know, uh, with, you know, very nice sort of facading and, and stuff all over them compared to these little wooden shacks. Right, again, it's showing us two different types of tech, two different levels of tech. So, I would, you know, in my opinion, this is what was found and this is what they, they could build. So completely different. In the front here, we have another big masonry building. And, of course, out in the back, all these houses, these are all at different levels. So I'm not, you know, I might have just been hilly, but but you can just see the amount of mud here and dirt that they're trying to clear out. And again, down the bottom here, under that level, right, the level's way up here, and it looks like it's a bit of a hill. But down the bottom here, we have what looks like a, a paved road or, you know, cement or some kind of road that may have been there, you know, beforehand, right, that they may have uncovered this. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? What do you think about all this? What was really going on here? Uh, Denny Hill, Seattle, 1910, as uh, they slowly wash away by powerful water cannons. So these are the water cannons I was talking about before, and they just basically wash this mud away. And is this why we, why we get all these photos that look like, you know, streets covered in mud that sort of, Looks like it's flowing, right? Were they going into cities and, and using these water cannons to get rid of all the mud and wash it away, basically? You know, because we do see a lot of photos that kind of look like that's what may have happened. And again, look at all the rubble in this mud. Like there's stones and bricks and bits of wood, all types of weird stuff. But clearly, this was a level at one, at one time. You can see how flat it is on the top there. And that's a lot of mud. Nice house here. And that may have been one of the wonders that they, they dropped down with the water cannons. 1907, west, uh, looking west down Spring Street. And again, it looks like we've got lower levels here already. All right, so... Now, these photos do sort of look like they're washing stuff away. Look at this building. You can see the mud it's coming up here, but clearly this building goes, you know, a couple of stories at least lower. So it really does look like that may have been what they were doing, just clearing all the, the mud and the debris from a previous deluge. And you can see, you know, the level of tech they got here you know, it's all hand tools, basically. They've got water cannons and steam shovels, but apart from that, it's all hand tools. But they were building these big masonry buildings, apparently. And, of course, it looks like we've got a couple of controllers walking around here. Um, next one, 1907. Using their horses, horse and cart. This is the level of tech at the time, wooden carts drawn by horses. Not sure what that is. What do you think that is? It kind of looks like cables, maybe. I don't know. Bits of iron. Doesn't look like wood. You can see we've got some of them are circles down here. So is this all stuff that was uncovered, that was buried? 
because you know they come along and, and they all their level of tech is wood. They're just building wood gangplanks and stuff. Got a steam shovel here, uh, and they're just using all these horses to, I guess, take away all the debris, right? Because when you uncover it all, the the, mush, the mud would wash away, but not the debris. So it looks like that's what they're doing here, hauling it all off. And again, you know, look at this building here. We've got three buildings above ground. We've got a couple of mud flooded windows here. And then we have foundations going or extra levels. I'm not sure, but something going down underneath that level of mud. More brick buildings here. And you see this a lot, that the, um, the wooden um, sidewalks, right? Pretty interesting. It looks like there's even like a little canal here. That could just be the, the mud that they've washed away. I'm not sure. But again, it looks like there's lower levels. And look at this pipe work. Okay, look at that big crack there. So are they being uncovered? Because I'll probably tell us that they were laying them. But it looks like they may have been there already. And they're, they're uncovering, literally uncovering the old world. 1907, 3rd Avenue, north of Mar Marion, Marion Street, is flattened out in the first Denny regrade. So here we go. This is what they were doing. Hand tools, horse and cart. They're building these stairways down to the new level. But as you can see, we've got, got these massive buildings. This one looks like it's half torn down. But look, big church here, or, you know, church-looking building, cathedral, oversized. So, you know, another question would be, why would they be building these huge buildings? And then, you know, I mean, this is 1907. These are probably, you know, 1800s is probably what they'll tell us. So why would you build that and then decide that you're going to level the city afterwards? Like, wouldn't you get it flat first? I don't know, another house here just teetering on the edge of a big mud cliff. But clearly there were some big buildings here already, uh, big masonry brick buildings. And this in the background, again, it looks, you know, like it's been smashed up a bit. And, you know, we know, right, these, these cities, they tell us, were founded, but I believe they were found. Another one from 1907. Look at this pipework. Does that look like new pipework? Like new bits of pipe that are ready to be, you know, laid underground? Or does that look like something that's been underground and recovered, you know, exposed when, as they go down the layers? That's kind of what it looks like to me. Um, now this, look at this. Clearly a big masonry building. So what's going on? Are the foundations all under here covered up? You know, and this is looks like it's sort of one story at the moment. Is that now a three-story building? I'm not sure. I haven't been to Seattle yet. Sounds cold, but I may get there. Uh, and here we go, more more pipe work. So this, you know, this does look fairly new. This could be what they're laying down. But these other ones uh, from the last picture, oh no, this picture, Apart from the fact they're different, uh, these are wider and obviously shorter. These look like they're pretty old, right? Like they've been buried for a while. And if that's true, then who buried them? You know, how are they uncovering them? And again, just rubble everywhere, right? I mean, look up here. There's just stuff everywhere. So why would you regrade a town? Okay, here's one of the houses on the hills. Whoops. And you can see we've got the water cannon. And the story is that they slowly wash away this mud and literally lower these houses down to a new level. So is that possible? Don't know, because we can see this house. It's, you know, this is a wooden house, obviously. And it's just sitting on, it, on its floor rafters, basically. It needs to be restumped as they go along and this is full of rock like big rocks this one so 
interesting, you know, part of our, our story, right? Interesting history that all this stuff, and they're telling us they were literally re-leveling stuff. Look at this. So what are they doing? Are they building? Because you can see the scaffolding. Are they building buildings at the same time that they're lowering the land level? Because that doesn't make sense. Or is this maybe an older building that they're reclaiming and you know refurbishing? And of course, we have the, the hat men up here watching the handiwork go on as they uncover the world, right? And steam trains, you know, they, and these tracks are just laid on mud, we're told, or are these again, were these uncovered and then just reused? Because trains, man, there's train tracks and the trains. It's an interesting story, that one. In the 1800s, they were literally like running these big old, you know, the big old iron steam engines. They were running them off bridges or crashing them into each other. You know, just, I mean, you can imagine the amount of time and effort it would go into building one. And then they just start destroying them all. So it's almost like they, they found a lot of them so many that they could just destroy them right uh, here's another one of the regrade and it's just a, it's, they're just weird photos you can see in the background again huge buildings already there this i'm not sure what's going on there obviously it's not the best picture I've got water hose in the in the foreground by the looks of it water cannon Washing the mud away. Remains of Denny Hill. More water cannons. And that's what they were doing. They were just blowing this mud, right? Turning it into rivers of mud and um, lowering the whole thing. Got a house here that looks like it's, again, needs some foundations. That looks like it needs a roof. Can't quite see. And in the background, Big, you know, very big buildings. But the thing is that there's houses and buildings everywhere. So, you know, who designed this place and who decided after they'd built it that they were going to lower the levels? You know, it's pretty, pretty strange. Uh, again, leveling streets in Seattle. Right, just washing it all away or maybe uncovering what is underneath. Oh. A lady jumping out of an egg. I don't know how that got there. <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, that's the Seattle regrade. All right, 157 of you watching. Thanks all for being here. What do you think of that? Uh, Just JP. Hey, how are you going? US reset. LBK. Darren End. Uh, leveling the land. Terraforming it. I mean, it looks like they're uncovering something to me. Alpha Billy, how you going? Old World USA, Columbus, 1592. You mean Christophe Colomb? Didn't he arrive in the Caribbean in 1492? That's what I believe. Um, Adam Bailey, how you going? Thanks for being here. Are they just digging out the buried floors of the buildings? They can or want that's, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, they, they are very, very cool images, hey? And, and this is the thing, you know, why aren't we taught any of this? Like, is anyone, obviously I grew up in Australia, but did anyone in America get taught this at school? Like, this is the biggest thing about history is they don't teach us this stuff. So it's, it's very strange. Exactly, like those train tracks, uh, uh, yeah, how are they laying them? And, and you know, you have to have a, a good, solid foundation to put train tracks on. You can't just kind of throw them on the ground. That, that would all have to be levelled and compacted and everything. So it, it just it just doesn't make, make sense. Hey, thanks for being here. Um, Vivian Mercier. I don't think it's possible to lower house. Yeah, that's what I think. It, it's just, just, just a strange story, isn't it? It's a very strange story. Um, I think the massive foundries of the old world were reactivated. They were found dry. Ah, nice. <laughs> Foundry found dry. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, hey, West Oz, how you going? Chicky Rogue, hello. Adam Bailey, past tense of, yeah, founded. Yeah, exactly. So they tell us, you know, that they were founded cities, but they were found. Or as Kelly would say, found dead, right? Found empty, unused. Um, Mark of Oz, hello. Thanks for being here. Nigel Betts, hello. Uh, Splinty, I'm going to call you Splinty because I can't say that without... <laughs> without um, without, oh my God, my brain's gone. Um, without a, an, an A-I-E-I-U. Um, New Zealand, how you going? Thanks for being here. Vladimir Serban, Old World Belgrade. Bless up. Old World Belgrade. I'm not sure what you mean. Belgrade, um, that's in, where is Belgrade? Is that in the UK? It's in Europe somewhere. Darren N, I think 100 years of Dark Ages might have been the aftermath and cleanup, digging out floors, terraforming, um, and destroyed what could be safe. Yeah, I look, yeah, it could could well be, right? The Dark Ages, there's also, you know, the, the, the time anomaly, uh, anomaly with the Dark Ages, you know, were they actually, did they even exist? Well, it's called the Dark Ages where nothing happened because, you know, that was where the the thousand years, right, that that may have disappeared from our calendar were, or it's not quite a thousand years. Uh, I, I put up a video the other day showing Daniel Boone's grave and uh, we went out and we found some um, tombstones with J's on them, right? We've got this whole thing with the J and the I and the X before the, the year, so that's, you know, part of the, did they add a thousand years to the calendar? Who knows? They like stupid people. <laughs> yes, they do. Because stupid people don't question. They don't question anything. There you go. I've been to Seattle. Never had a clue that happened. Ex-logician. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, you think you would be ta taught your actual history. Right, um, Jay Dreamers actually did a, a put up a video. I think it was like a, a cut from a longer video, but about George Washington, and just showing all the photos of him. And you know, it doesn't look like the same. It just looks like these random pictures they've put together and they've named them all George Washington. You know, so you get taught that in history class, I'm sure, in America, but you don't get taught about regrading and all this kind of stuff. Old World US, USA, you should do a trip with Paul Cook and Ancient Historia. Wow. Wow. Maybe I will. Have to keep your eyes and ears peeled. Um, and by the way, I am leaving. Well, actually, I'm leaving in the US in, my God, is it four days? Holy crap, i got to get my stuff together. Um, back to Australia for the Mulaney event. So come and join us. Uh, I did I put the links below? If I didn't, I'll put them under when I when I when I get off. And then off to Europe for the the Balkans and Bosnian Pyramid tour, which starts on the fifth of May. Uh, I'm heading out two weeks early, so yeah, man, uh, come and join us if you would wish. There are still a few tickets left for the uh, the the Balkans Pyramid tour, and um, you know we, we can pretty much take as many people as we want to Mulaney, I guess. So tickets still available. 10.30 p.m. in Perth. Ah, is it? Yeah, I wasn't sure the time. But um, the time is all, I'm very confused with the time at the moment. And and last night, it just changed by an hour as well. We went from daylight savings, no, from non-daylight savings to daylight savings, I think. Sayonara. And I am actually hanging out with Anara at the moment. It's been very awesome. Um, yeah, no one teaches this intention, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, Belgrade is in Serbia. Oh, well, I'll be, I'll be very close to there. I, I might be going through. I don't know. <laughs> I kick knowledge from Vermont. How are you going? Thanks for being here. Would be nice, wouldn't it be nice? How are you going? Telks, <laughs> hello. It's 
space may be the final frontier, but it's made in the Hollywood basement. That's right. That's what the chili peppers say. Um, Serbia in Belgrade, yes. Yes, it's a big world, right? I'm, I'm getting to, you know, I know where most places are. I haven't really done Europe, but I'll be there in eight or nine weeks, something like that, maybe a bit less. No, it's got to be a lot less than that. It's like four or, four or five weeks. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, so I'm going to learn where, you know, everything in Europe is as I, as I wander around. Uh, dark ages were the age of light. They lie about everything. Well, that they do love to invert stuff. It could be. Could be. Um, you know, as far as I can see, when we look back at, um, you know, what we're given as history and the dates we're given and the, and the images, it looks like, the end of the 1700s that something happened and we went from yeah like a society that was very creative and colorful and for the people to one that well we're still in today right we went to the brutalistic uh brutalistic architecture that the black suits and the bowler hats and all that kind of stuff and every, all the creativeness suddenly went out and that's when they brought in of course the world's fairs the schooling system the food we ate all this kind of stuff um, da, da, da. Jolly Man, how you going? Good to see you. James Anderson, we are told George has been everywhere. George Washington, yeah. Um, yeah it's an interesting story, right? I mean, also the Mount Rushmore. And if you look into that, that, there's some interesting, you know, narratives to that as well. We should basically just question everything. Because, you know, I mean, there's no harm in questioning things, right? If it's right, well, you'll find out it's right. If it's wrong, you'll find out it's wrong. But you should definitely question and not just accept things that are told. Most things that we're told are either purposely, you know, skewed, purposely false, or they're just opinions. And people run around taking these opinions and false narratives and and putting them out as truth and repeating them to everyone in the usa yes that's yes yes sorry i didn't i should have probably checked the time i was actually thinking because sunday i thought oh I'll, I'll, I'll go on sort of after martin and then i got up and realized martin <laughs> martin was on last night my time so i'm very confused about the time arkansas adam buddy how you doing Anyone coming to see the eclipse next month? I think I might be. I, I will be there. I don't know whereabouts, but I will be somewhere looking at it. Definitely. Uh, spring is forward an hour. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, so basically you get an extra hour at the end of the day. Yeah. Hello from Tullum. Where is Tullum? Hello, Pete. How you going? Thanks for being here. Um... I took the daylight save. You took it. All right. How much did you get? How much did you save? How much did you save? <laughs> Would be nice, Florida. How are you going? Mark of Oz. Peaches. Moving to the country. I'm going to eat me a lot of peaches. Appalachia. Appalachia has old world buildings from one end to the other. Oh, really? But it's taught they were asylums. Oh, okay. I've never looked into the Appalachia. The Appalachian Mountains, that's where all the hillbillies live, isn't it? I, I haven't actually had a look at that, so maybe I shall check it out. Thanks. D. Hansen, uh, shall we make the short season a long one? I don't know. Shall we? Should we? Not sure. Um, all right. So, yes, I am staying with Sayonara, Anara. So everyone say hello to Anara. She's been looking after me very well. Um, and when I come back, we're, we're doing a reset retreat. So I'm going to be offline for two weeks. And we're going to be eating well and having uh, saunas and we've got a wobble board and ice baths. Um, Anara has not yet taken the plunge into the ice bath, but... We're going to get there, aren't we? Um, and lots of meditation. Um, get this this arm of mine working again. Um, Vinnie Doom. 
Vinny in Las Vegas, 7 a.m. here. All right. Thanks for joining us. I got to do. <laughs> I got do do. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Gigi, hello from the blustery Maine coast. Maine. So that's northeast, right? Is that right? Up sort of north of New York. Is that right? I think that's where it is. Um, was George Washington well? It's it's an interesting, you know, because there is that picture, right? I think it's in in the White House, is it? It's painted up in a dome, and it basically is depicting George as as a god. So who knows, man? I don't know if it was a first coming, but I mean, is that is that the narrative they're trying to spin? I'm not sure. Cajun Alaskan, thank you for being here. Colvanes might be trying. Try, yeah, well. So might gold veins, right? Um, gemstones. A lot of things might be might be linked to the the giant trees, and the giant trees seem to be, you know, back probably five ages around the, when the Titans are, and then we have all these ages, and things seem to get smaller and um, less advanced as we go forward, right? It's an interesting place for that we are in. Um, was this where did the things they find in the coal? Yeah, well, this yeah, man, that they found lots of things in coal seams. They tell us the coals, you know, however old, probably millions of years. Uh, I mean, the whole narrative is weird. It's geology is is it, it doesn't make any sense. You know, they tell us, you know, that apart from the land layer, the the layers of of dirt and land that that don't seem to sync up when you look at it. it doesn't sync up with the story but they tell us things you know to petrify they, they take thousands of years if not more but you know we, there's in tasmania there was a mine they found a hat down there and it was stone they found a cowboy boot with a leg half a leg in it from the 1800s they actually found the manufacturer of the boot and they were in the 1800s and it was solid rock and then you have the cave um uh, what's it called? It's in it's in England, and basically you can hang like people start hanging like teddy bears, like soft teddy bears, and they will turn to stone in like three to six months. So it's all to do with the mineral content of the water that turns things to stone. There may be other ways as well. People have sort of put out that it might be to do with plasma. Things like this may also turn things to stone quite quickly. Um, but yeah, it's in, it's it's. It's a, it's, it's a, the whole, all the world's a stage, man. Like we were told, right? It's just a movie, just getting us to believe different narratives so they can manipulate us. But it's also there to, to give us something to do, right? We need something to do while we're down here. Now, do yourself a favor, listen to the song New World by Prince. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. There you go. Go and check it out, everyone. In the Ozarks. Pablo's dog. Oh. <laughs> nice. Thanks for being here. Ah, oh, London McLovin, how you doing, mate? Good to see you. Uh, 12.30 a.m. Oh, in Queensland. Oh, okay. So I've definitely got the wrong time for Australia. Sorry about that, Australia. So I guess I'm talking to the Americans today and probably some Europeans. So thanks all for being here. Um. Conga, I'm flying into Germany. Um, what's the date? 17th of April, around there. So, yeah, I will be in Germany. I'm not sure where. I'm, I'm basically hanging out with Tara, and she is, um, yeah, she, she's got the itinerary, so we're going to hang out for two weeks, and then we're doing the tour, and then another two weeks. So I'm going I'm to see quite a few countries. Oops. Oi, oi, Mr. Martin Leadkey. How are you going, mate? Good to see you. When are you going to be in the US? I heard you're coming over. Um, you've got a, an event, haven't you, in Florida on the 20th, I think. Um, I'll actually be in Australia for that. I'm coming back on the 22nd, but good luck with it all. Chuck a link in if you want. Um, uh, doing a live event with Jason. I'm not sure who else is going to be there. Rescue Feed at Freedom. Newcastle, Indiana. Thanks for being here. Um, 
Amade. Oh, <laughs> that's not great money from Jax. Jax, Florida. All right. Uh, good morning from California, Dave Walters. So we definitely got lots of lots of Americans here today. Thank you all for being here. A Norwegian, great walker from Norway. See lots of interesting things here. A few people see it. Yeah, I mean, up in you know Norway, the Scandinavian countries, there's some cool stuff, especially star forts. There's some very cool star forts up there, and no doubt old world buildings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, do, do, do. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you all, um, I did start, we were showing some pictures of old Perth on my last life, but um, the, the pictures weren't working. Then I got cut off for a bit, so it wasn't the best dream. So then I you know, sat and ranted for half an hour. But um, I thought I would show you... This. And there's, there's a couple of these around for different cities. Now, this is basically an interactive map of Perth. And up here you can see, you can get the date, so 1800, nothing. And as we go forward, you'll see there's more, or more of these photos appear, right? So if we go back, oops, not that way, but, you know, if we go back to, say, 1900, and these are all old photos, and you just click on them, and you get old photos pop up. So this is a view from Barrack Street Jetty of the old courthouse, and they're a bit small, but you can open the image in a new tab. I think it's a bit bigger. And again, look at all the mud here. All right, got a couple of old buildings sitting up on. I can't zoom in on this, sorry, but but this um, map is full of these old pictures. So I've, I've put the link down below if you want to check it out. I'm going to go through a couple of other ones. There's a really good one in New York, and there's quite a few of them. And then down the side here, we have all these other pictures of different landmarks as it loads up. So this top one is the Federal Hotel. And I opened it up before. You, you can actually... I'll show you how to get them interactive in a minute. But look at this. All right, so this is Federal Hotel, Wellington Street, Perth, circa 1905. Okay, so a few things here. First of all, look at the streets. Mud, right? You can see someone's taking their cart through here. So they're not paved, right? So how did they get all the, all the materials here to build this building? All right, because, I mean, seriously, do they think that they're just going to be horse and cart through the mud, the first thing you would do is build a good road and then you would build warehousing facility, right? Somewhere to store all the stuff while you're building this. And we never see good roads. We never see, you know, the warehouses. So we never see the transport system or the, the storage system when they're building these buildings. And this is clearly full of the features of the old world. Got the antennas up the top there, you know, the spires, Got all the architraving, which, oops. Um, no, this is 1905. Look at the paintwork here. Doesn't look new, does it? And Perth first found, I believe, 1927, uh, around there. And so basically, you know, this is like 70, 75 years after that. And so it doesn't, I'm not sure when this actual building was built, but you can see this at this point, it's already looking old. All the paint's already peeled off. Even this, some of this brickwork looks pretty old and worn. You know, there's patina everywhere. And of course, look at these windows. All right, dunk, 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 going into the ground. And it's not clearly not level. You can see, you know, because of the windows, right? Even here, there's like a half, half doorway type thing. And in Australia, um, they love to tell us these were cellars, you know, for that, that basically they'd put the beer, right, in, in these old pubs. But you're not, you're, not, you're not getting anything through that window, all that. But so this is clearly, to me, this is a mud flooded building. And then the other thing we have is we have this, you know, magnificent building, 
brick, iron, glass, all this stuff. And what do we have next to it? A simple wooden fence. All right, so again, we've got two different types of technology here. And you see this everywhere, uh, all over the world. You see these, these weird pictures where it's clearly two different types of tech. And, you know, these big buildings, like I said, mud roads. Like the first thing you would do is make sure you could get your materials in and out easily before you started construction. And with these big buildings, if you've seen a big building being built, they they always level them, man. They start on a level playing field. It's different if it's a house, you know, if it's a small construction. You know, in, in America, where I am at the moment, North Carolina, there's lots of houses with basements, right? If, if the land's not flat, they'll just build a brick, you know, a brick um, surround for it basically and sit the house on top. And so there you do get, you know, funny walls right that look like they they kind of go into the ground but that's just to to get a level platform to put a house on but that's a house this thing you could not do that with it with a structure this big like you, it just wouldn't it would all collapse in on itself so that's a pretty interesting picture uh let's see what else we can find here we'll go and click on some random picture um what have we got here? So this is Government Offices, St. George's Terrace, 1861. Okay, this is, again, two-storey building, and you can see this looks, can't quite get in there, but it looks like that's dropping down to the back. And if we click this, if you go on and have a look at this map, pretty sure that you click this, and mm -hmm. this is what, yeah, and then you get the, 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 larger image that you can zoom in on this guy looks oops wait for it to buffer look at this guy with his tall gun he looks like one of those indian as as far as india the country indian kind of soldiers doesn't he but you can see just here you can see this is going down on an angle all right at the back we've got two stories at the front one story all right you see this everywhere got these old pylons and things and even these pylons right these are i would say they're brick rendered brick and here we have a wooden gate and we've got these two different types of tech and if they could build these things why what are they doing building wooden fences in other places and and again no roads it's just dirt paths, right? So we'll see what else we can see. Oops, where we go here? Click that off. Um, so th there's lots of, um, you know, pictures of Perth. You can sort of check them all out. Uh, it's got the, the, tells you what they all are. This is Barnet, Barnet's store and attached house. Duh, 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 St. George's Terrace, 1861. All right, so again, 1861, you know, we're talking like 30, 40 years after Perth was apparently founded, right? And, you know, there was nothing here. They didn't know where any of the resources were. They had no mines. They had no, you know, transport systems, warehousing systems. They had no glassworks. They had no iron foundries. They had to get find the iron ore, mine it, melt it down, right, and then turn it into products. Like, they didn't have anything. But, you know, 30, 40 years later, got a big masonry building here that's, again, right, going down into the ground. You can see these windows, right, what we call mud-flooded windows. And up here we've got a big, big church. And this, even this building is quite big and looks oversized. So this was all whacked up pretty quick. And if we look down here as it buffers, I'm pretty sure this is another wooden Looks like this bit here is a wooden fence and then it goes into the the brick fence. So all these photos, they, they show us different levels of technology. Uh, this is St. George's Terrace, 1898. So 70 years after Perth was founded, found. Look how built out it is. I mean, look at that. All the way up. 
Now that up in there is that there used to be um, a, a basically a star fort up there, a star fort citadel. I showed a bit of it on my last live. I'm not sure if that's it, but that's a quite a big building. And look at this road, All right? Dirt roads, dirt roads, but we've got um, you know paved or masonry kind of sidewalks, footpaths, huge. You know this is a what four-story building, and again, right level here, mud plotted windows here. But the whole thing, like both sides of the street, just built out. Like who 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 built all this stuff? And again, where do all the resources come from? That's the biggest question. Where you know where were they making all these bricks, all this glass? Because Perth is the most isolated city in the world, so nothing was coming overland in the eighteen hundreds. I can I can guarantee that they would they would apart from the time factor. You know, literally, it would take a year to get here from the east. You know, in in horse and buggy, and the loads would be very small. Um, the, the other option is ship, right? And they do sort of try and say in some of the narratives that it was brought in by ships. But, you know, a ship can only bring so much. Like these wooden ships, you know, they're not bringing in windows, right? All the windows for this, you know, especially when you're going up and down in the ocean. I mean, how long would the glass last, right? So all of this stuff, in my humble opinion, it was already here. So I'll just uh, get rid of them. We'll have a bit more of a look. Um, click on another random one. Victoria Avenue, 1900. And here we have it. Again, dirt roads, right? Wooden picket fences. And then wall-to-wall -wall brick buildings going up to this. Right, oversized church with a big tower at the front of it. And this is, this is, we just see the same things over and over again when we look at history. Very interesting. Now, a lot of people think it, it's all, you know, I put up some, some shots of mud flooded buildings and some people got very triggered. I put them up on Instagram and, and some people just, they want to fight for that narrative, man. They want to, you know, fight for their stupidity, basically. <laughs> um, this is the Old Swan Brewery. Well, the Old Brewery, um, you know, that's what it's called anyway. Don't know if it, if it was originally a brewery, but again, this this is quite a, a very large, it's, it's a complex. It's a few different buildings. It's a red bricker, you know, very, it's, a, it's very big. It's, it's a big complex. We've got some big, Chimneys here. So this was all built. What year did they say that was? 1899. Again, dirt roads. How are they getting all these bricks in here on horse and cart, pulling them through the mud? All right, doesn't make sense. All right, and apart from the fact that why are they building a brewery this big in 1900 when Perth's population would have been pretty small? Again, we can see wooden fencing. This house, I believe that they, they could have built for sure, 100%. But that, that's a different story to these massive masonry buildings. This is looks like it's a wooden house. That's all a bit um, vanillaed out, like the, the, the aperture on the, on the camera is not doing the best. But it looks like a big masonry building in the back here. But these front ones, these look like they're just wooden. You know, so they, they could have definitely been built, you know, with the same, just like they could build this wooden fence. That's a completely different story to this structure here. So, uh, da, 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 da. oh my gosh, we've been going an hour already. Time flies when you're having fun, deconstructing the past. So, 1900, so this is Fremantle, basically, it's, it's, part of Perth, it's it's the port, the port city. And we'll see what we've got there in 1900. Oh, just, that's just a, a St. John's Ambulance. Interesting. 
Might have to go a bit forward. Okay, we've got some old ships. We've got an old paddle steamer here. Japanese, oh no, Japanese warship. What's it doing in Australia in 1900? It's a good question, right? Ships docked at Fremantle. Oh, we'll have a look at those. Uh, scenes of Claremont. Free, oh, okay. Claremont's a suburb of Perth. But these are the ships that apparently everything got brought over on, right? And you can see they're not really that big. And, you know, you have to carry all the crew, all the food and everything, all the supplies. And after all that, you don't really have a lot of room for, for things like bricks and windows and iron balustrades and doors and stained glass window, all this stuff that they would have had to bring in by ship because, you know, to, to build stuff because they didn't have the industry here to do it. They just didn't. And uh, still back in the day, tall ships, right? So you're sailing around and it would take months, uh, six months plus to sail from Europe to Australia. So they're very interesting stories that they tell us. Now, if I get this slider and bring it forward a bit, we'll see we get a few more photos popping up. Okay, so let's see what this is. Well, come on, work, work, be interactive. Oh, a couple, Alfred and Lillian Taylor from 1942. How you going, Alfred and Lillian? Oh, we've got some, some machinery here, uh, industrial machinery at the Joyce Brothers in the 50s and you can see even you know just by the amount of photos and that perth had a tiny population and i mean it's it's bit, it's about a million now i think um but you know up even in the, in the i think we didn't hit a million people in perth until the 90s or something during the 60s and 70s man there was, there was a couple hundred thousand people there so you can imagine how many people back in 1900 not many yeah, we have we, we have these photos of these built out cities. Oh, that's those dudes again. And I have found that they they do sort of um, avoid some pictures. I was looking at the New York one before, and I couldn't find anything on the Star Fort there. Fort Amsterdam, you just couldn't see them. Like you, you just Google Fort Amsterdam, and they're, they're everywhere, right? Look at this. So. Uh, what was the year here? This was 1905. So you tell me, are they building this building? Or are they maybe fixing it up or deconstructing it? I mean, if they're deconstructing it in 1905, but it hasn't been there very long. But you can see bits of wooden stuff in here, but this looks like an old building, right? It doesn't look brand new. These bits here, are obviously, for supports that are sitting in the wall. And then you look at the background. Now, this is Fremantle, and it's, it's fully built out, right? With big, old-world masonry buildings. Got some mud-flooded windows here. You can see they're bigger, and they get smaller as they go up around the corner. So in 1900, in Fremantle, the population would have been very, very small. But look, this whole place is built out. And we've got towers, arched windows, another tower here. You can see this got columns on it. Uh, Fremantle's full, wall to wall, full of, of you know Tartarian buildings. It's crazy. So I'm just going to shut some of these pictures down. Uh, so there we go. We'll see what we've got up here. What have we got? Swan Valley up here. International Harvest Company. So, oh wow, that's that's quite a big, big build out. Um, and like I said before, down the side here, there's all these other interesting pictures, like the West West Australian Farmers Building in 1925, again with mud flooded windows. Look at this one, 1932, Tranbury Buildings. This might be a better picture, this one. Let's have a look. 90 King Street. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, 
And as you see, that it's just the same. You can find these buildings everywhere with all the same features. You know, the arched doors, the portico bits, this this railing, right, sort of stone cement railing. But of course, we're told, at least in Australia, we're told that's like Greek, right? So what's it doing in Australia back in the day? Old brick wall obviously had some advertising on it. Got some, um, I guess that's a big antenna. But wall-to-wall -wall buildings. And the way that they are wall-to-wall, -wall, you know, it's, it's not like you can build a building and then build a building down the street and then slowly kind of infill it and end up with these wall-to-wall -wall perfect buildings. They would have to all be built out pretty much at the same time, right? So the story we're given just doesn't make a lot of sense. So like I said, I'll leave the link for this below. Well, it is below. Um, if you just scroll down in the description to where it says links, and you can change the dates here. As you see, as you go forward, you get more and more pictures and less and less as you go back. So, there, you know, obviously there is a lot of photos in this, so I won't go through them all. Oh, okay, we'll go have a look at, this is Rottnest Island, uh, the island off the coast, which has the quokkas, if you've heard of quokkas. And it, it also had a starfoot on it. And it was called, it's called Rottnest because it was first seen by the Dutch and they thought that the quokkas were giant rats. And so they, they called it Rat's Nest Island. And, of course, in Dutch that is Rottnest. So there you go, a bit of history for you. Um, yeah, this, the old barracks, right? And, of course, we're told they were all for World War II and all this kind of stuff because, you know, clearly people were going to come to Perth, Western Australia, right, in their battleships to, to wage war. I mean, it's, it's just a silly story. So this is 19, so 50s or 1936. Look how old this already looks. Right? It looks like the bottom of the wall's been washed away, the top's a bit broken missing rocks here and again this is all stone and we've got a wooden door so it just kind of reeks of something that's been found and they've just re reused it right refurbished it with put wooden doors in there because all the doors would have been missing and this I'm trying to think um photos and water looks like it's the barracks um can't quite it's not not giving me enough it could be no, could be the harbour, um, Thompson Bay, but I think that's pretty much the barracks. And But that's the thing, even in this little island off the coast, there, there's these old world looking buildings right, with all these sort of similar features and looking retrofitted. Right, look at the door on this one. Right, clearly that's an old arched doorway. And they've infilled it and put this in there. Right? And very old, you know, it looks looking pretty ancient already in 1950. So there we go. Um, like I said, the link is below. So uh, go through it at your will because there's lots of pictures. And this, you know, there's pictures for the whole state basically. Down here is Albany. Um, again, right, same kind of buildings. Same features, 1937. Um, so on the Albany Highway, Albany, 1937. So there you go, uh, the Perth Interactive Map. All right, 218 of you watching. Thank you all for being here. Hope you enjoyed that one. Yeah, man, they all look older than World War II, right? Biden wants your passport. What's... What's he going to do with your passport? Do you look like Bud? Is he after your identity? What's going on there? Yeah, it all looks much, much older. Hey, Jim, how you doing, mate? Um, Nazarene channel. Oh, I obviously missed the first part of that. Um, I'm going to be over your way soon, Jim. Maybe we can hook up. Um, I'll have to send you a message or contact you somehow. Looks like the old architecture in Hanoi. Yeah, I mean, it, this stuff's everywhere. It's through Southeast Asia. It's in Japan. It's in China. You know, these places that are supposed to have a complete different culture. 
um, and, and we're shown their traditional buildings and they don't look like ours, like like Eastern or you know European type buildings. Um, but they're full of the old you know Tartarian buildings that look the same as we've got all over the realm. But they try and tell us, you know, that in Japan oh, it was all wooden and these Shinto type houses and you know the rice screens and that, but when you look at the photos, that's not what you see, man. What if all timelines are happening together? Well, you know, there, there is only now, right? As far as I'm concerned, so I, I, I don't really, I'm not, you know, I'm still not sold on the multiple timelines happening concurrently kind of narrative. I think that's probably more of a story. You know, because it's one of those things that's impossible to prove, right? It's an endless rabbit hole. And that's that's one of the things about all these rabbit holes and all this information is, you know, it's results. Where, where are you going to end up if we go down these? And they love to make these rabbit holes that, that have no end. So you're down there forever, right? And, and that way you're not looking around at what's actually going on. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure about the, the concurrent timelines and stuff. They steal human energy with football, gridiron, battery parks, racing circuits. Man, give them bread and circuses. I mean, all they're doing is getting your attention, right? And, and so that you're focusing your attention and definitely you know, definitely concerts, right? We've just had Taylor Swift in Australia. Not that I'm in Australia, but um, yeah, yeah. And then while you're doing that, you're not focusing on what they're doing. You're not focusing on your own life and building what you want to build you know you're drinking beer and watching some guy run around and butt heads with someone so it's all it's all bread and circuses um michael joshua lewis hello travel bug how are you going i know it looks like an old crumbling european city yeah oh thank you very much our billy um Passport, yeah, man. Can you pass the port? All right. But that's what, you know, all these trolls and naysayers and the news and music, so all they want is your attention. Because while they've got your attention, you're not do, you're not living your life, right? Um, Jackie Miller, how are you going? Um, thanks for being here. Oh, you might drive to Bosnia. Well, oh, man, yeah, come and say hello. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I think I'm going to be in France at least for a little bit. Um, going to go check out if these tractor drivers spraying poo on the parliament are real, right? <laughs> is, that, is that actually happening, Jim? Um, uh, yeah, I've seen this narrative starting to come out. I mean, there was like do we know that i don't know it's a theory i've saw, I saw the, the thing that came out saying um australia was connected to well it still is connected to antarctica i've actually got uh, i've got a few more pics we'll go through just some random ones and i've got a picture about that in there steph marshall hello thanks for being here um they like yeah of course man it's all a show Right, it's all, and that's all. It's just a show. You don't have to watch it. You can change the channel if you want. All right, it's just like everything. Um, one of those, right? <laughs> um, um, timelines are like curvature, undemonstrable. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it's just one of these things that there could be a rabbit hole. So, you know, my advice would be just be careful what, what rabbit holes you're going down because never-ending rabbit holes that they don't teach or anything, you don't come to any conclusion, you're just always going down, 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 um, you know, thinking you're making progress, but then after a while you realise that, you know, th th there's nothing you can prove at the end of it. Now, if it's fun, then, yeah, man, do what's fun, but but I would, you know, be careful of your time and who you give it to. Psychiatrist asks patient, is the curvature in the room with you now? <laughs> the Nazis and the Philadelphia Experiment. Yeah, maybe, you know, we, we do have, again, we have all these narratives and we've got Project Looking Glass um, and all these other bits and pieces and uh, New Schwabeland, right, and all this kind of stuff. 
But again, you know, I've, I've looked into a lot of that and can't find any conclusive evidence for, for much of it. So it's all interesting. You know, it's interesting to contemplate and to think about, and I'm sure there's some truth in it, but it, it, I don't think there's 100% truth of anything. But I think everything is the, it's the 80 20 rule, right? All, all lies have 20% truth, and all truth has 20% lies, pretty much. So I think the best thing is just to be autodidactic, right? Be self educated, think for yourself and work it out. And if there's something there for you, then good. If there's not, then good. You've just worked out how to not waste your time. Shepherd and Victoria, 2.10 a.m. Wow, Shane O, thanks for being here, Shane EO. Um, well, this is the thing. Uh, quantum matrix slave system for souls. If you believe it, it's true, Kevin. I'm not a slave. I'm not anyone's slave, you know. Uh, so w- what you believe is, is what you're going to create. You know, your past and your present equals your future. So the past is all these things that we believe and all these experiences and how we view them and blah, blah, blah. And the present is what we, what we actually do. What are we doing? And you put those together and you create your, your future. So if your past is, oh, my God, I'm a slave, you know, I'm being ruled, the government, all the big corporations, they're controlling everything. If that's what you're thinking about is your past and so in the present you're not creating your best life and you're making excuses because, you know, how can you live a best life because because the government, right, because tax, right, because this and that, well, that, that's what your future is going to be, probably not what you want it to be. Yeah, Loosh, yeah, you know, we've all heard the stories, you know, Archons harvesting Loosh. Um, again, there's no conclusive proof. I've never felt any any energy being leached from me. I would say attention for sure that they want your attention, but you can choose not to give it to them, you know. So, again, all these things we make real by by the amount of time we give them and the attention we give them. So I guess the question is, what do you want? What, what, do, you want, what, what do you want your future to be? Don't know. Don't know yet, Jim. Um, are you on WhatsApp? Um, send me an email. Uh, and let me know, like, a way that we can maybe chat because I'll find out because, yeah, Tara's done the whole itinerary for me. I'm just I'm just along for the ride, man. <laughs> I'm just there for the fun. And this is the thing, right? It, two years ago, I started just speaking to the universe, saying I'm going to be travelling. In 2024, I'm going to be travelling. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to see the world. I had no idea how it would work, how it would happen, how I would get there. But guess what? It's 2024. Um, I did my first trip to America last year, October. Now I'm back here. In the next week, I'm going back to Australia, then back to America for three weeks. Then I'm going to Europe for seven weeks, right? And that was literally created, right? It's literally just been created. I'm not paying to go to Europe. It's all covered, right? So you get to create whatever you want to create. So I would would say focus on what you want. Um, you know, it's much more fun, right, to, to live the life you want than to live a life where you're a slave in a slave system, in a reincarnation system and all this stuff and you can't do anything because the powers that want to be are just, you know, repressing you and, and, and ruling you. Uh, well, that's going to be announced in the next week or so. Um, all right, I'll let you know. It's going to be... Turkey and Greece. We may just be going to go Beckley Tepe, um, but that's going to be announced in the next week or so. Um, yeah, well, again, do we have any proof of that? I mean, I know the world looks weird, right? But but when you understand the world is just a show, like, like what, what are we basing all this on? Most of our stuff that we, you know, the, these beliefs of what the world is and all these things that have happened, they're based on, TV, news, social media, right, music, all this stuff that we see, not on our own experiences, right? I mean, it definitely feels like time is speeding up to me at the moment um, because I have less of it, right? But but with all this stuff about CERN and that, look, it, it may be happening. You know, we've all seen the, the clip when they were opening that tunnel up near CERN. They had all the, the, the you know, beasties and ghouls and all this demonic stuff going on. 
but it's a show, guys. It's just a show. It's just like turning on a Stephen King movie, right? You see the same ghouls and beasties and that, but do you believe that's real? Right? That This is the thing. The news is a show. It's not real. They're not telling you what's actually going on. They're telling you what they want you to believe. And, and when you can sort of make that, you know, that connection or that disconnection, then then it doesn't affect you. It's just a show, guys. That's all it is. Like, like the Brady Bunch, right, it was not real. It was a show, just like the news is a show, just like most of social media. It, it's a show. That's all it is. All right? That's all it is, in my humble opinion. All right? Rocks from Margaret River. All right, nice part of the world, man. Um, oh, okay, Jim, you're on WhatsApp under Jim Dillinger. I'm send me a message. I'm there just under Campbell uh, Purvis. So C A M B E L L P U R V I S. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> if you send me random messages, guys, I'm, I'm not going to reply to them because I can't even get to the messages that, that I get at the moment. Um, but yeah, send me a message to my name, Jim. But I'll, I'll look you up too under Jim Dillinger. Um, yeah, man. Imagine bumping into old Graham. I mean, Graham was, you know, integral to, to my journey, um, history, but clearly, you know, he, he's sort of gone down the, he's spreading a narrative now. But, but with, you know, he, he was the one that sort of stood up at, you know, back in the 90s. And said maybe it's not all aliens when everything was aliens, right? Like everything. Oh, the aliens built this and that. Basically, anything that people couldn't work out how they were done, there would be aliens. So that's that's why I've got to give you know Graham kudos for that. That he was the one that sort of said no. Maybe we were a lot smarter back then, and we did it all. But yeah, now you know now he's charging eight hundred bucks a ticket to go see him speak, and he's you know doing the narrative thing. But again, it's just all a show. You know, if you find that interesting, then coolio, man. Check it out. All right, let me get this. I've just got a few more pictures we can go through. Whoops. And then we, um, we'll probably be at the two-hour mark. What are we at? An hour 20. All right, let's have a look here. All right, so these are pretty much just random pictures. I just collect pictures as I go through. And put them in a file to, to look at. Now, I mean, this, I don't have a name where this is. Let me know in the comments if you do know what cathedral it is. But look at the work on this. Like, seriously, like, how, like how, how did they even do this? Look at this leaf work. Everything is so perfectly symmetrical and just completely covered, right? And this is so many buildings in the old world. We get this. And, of course, you know, they put their little... Um, the saint here with his crook, and that may be a new statue, it may be an old statue, and all they have to do is change the story, right? Change the narrative about who it is because we don't know who it is. They just say, Oh, yeah, that was Saint Peter or whatever, and you know, put a little plaque at the bottom, and we all believe it. So, this is all you know, it's, it's, it's all manipulation. It is like they say, a prison for your mind, but only if you let it be. Only if you buy into it. Another one of these I found, 1899, the top one, and the same address. Now, this, I think this is a drawing. It doesn't quite look like a photo. It might be. I've got cars in the background here. It's just the, the front here looks a bit. Actually, no, I think that is a photo. Um, so this is Columbus, Ohio. And this is what we used to have. Again, like that last picture, just everything so ornate and so symmetrical and so well built and so mud flooded <laughs> uh, and they love to knock it down right and replace it with brutalism um these are some pillars we see this a lot like carved into a cliff now a lot of people will probably say this is all melted and it may be i don't know Maybe it's melted, maybe it's not. Maybe it was carved into the into the rock, right, into the cliff. Because we, we know that they were definitely, they had tech that, that we don't have today and they could do 
stuff that we still find amazing today, even though, right, we're the epitome of, of civilization, they love to tell us. I just find it interesting. See on these pillars, like this, this bit here on all of them sort of sticks out. So I wonder if that turns, if it's some kind of machine. Um, Praveen Mohan goes into a lot of that. He looks at a lot of the uh, Hindu temples and he's found many, you know, pillars and other bits and pieces that actually move like they're, they're some kind of machinery. Okay, so this is that picture of Australia that I found. So this is Australia, obviously, uh, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, and this is Antarctica. And so they've overlaid Australia and um, Papua New Guinea, a bit of Southeast Asia here, a few of the islands, I think that's Micronesia or something. And it kind of fits quite well, all right, in Antarctica. So that's interesting. Does it mean that Australia is covered in ice? No. Does it mean Australia is Antarctica? No. But, but we look back at all these maps of the old world, you know, so the 14, 1500s, 1600s, and Australia doesn't seem to exist. But there are land masses out where Australia where we're told Australia is at the moment. That's the other thing. We don't really know where, where anything is because on this globe, they've had to cut out 50% at least of the land mass down here in this realm to turn it into a globe. So everything's, you know, out of shape and probably in the wrong spot. But this, you know, it's very interesting. You know, definitely in the old maps, it shows Australia um basically is Antarctica, but but Antarctica is obviously not this shape, right? Because that's the other thing about this. You might go, wow, that's, that, that means Australia's Antarctica. Well, this is made up. This doesn't exist. This is on the bottom of a globe, right? But it's interesting. Is that how they've got the shape? You know, it's interesting. This is sideways. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're trying to show, but... What do we got here? Russia, Siberia. I guess that's Australia down there. So it's there for some reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the thing. They say identical, but you've got to understand this doesn't exist. Uh, the mud. I found this one interesting. It's just got a big old building here. Can you see these little bits? Look at this. Tops of windows. All right. So, you know, all the naysayers will say, oh, that's a basement. Well, come on. Really? You know, they all the naysayers, they'll point to, you know, only a couple of buildings, and then you show them different ones, and they don't really want to look. They have their little theories, but they don't seem to work. That's that. They clearly look like the tops of windows, which, you know, look fairly similar to these windows here, right? So inundation, like we saw those pictures at the start of Seattle with all the mud. Uh, this is a relief uh, from a Sumerian relief. And, and we see this a lot. You see it in Egypt, a lot of Egyptian reliefs and things. Um, these smaller people um, working with or for these giant people. You know, the, and the fam you know, got the famous one of Gilgamesh holding the lion. Uh, so were there giants and humans you know, around at the same time? Who knows? Or are we the humans? Is this the humans? And there were smaller people. Uh, there's always there's always at least another way to look at things. This uh, is from Antwerp in Belgium. Belgium? <laughs> Belgium. Look at this cart, man. Looks like it's all carved wood, but look at the size of this thing. And it's got a big statue of a lion on the front. I mean, that is pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, these horses have got a bit of a job towing it around, but, it, you know, it's pretty big too, right? It kind of looks like old world, you know, old world tech to me. Uh, this is the Arc de Triomphe around 1880. Um, and look at it, it's looking decidedly, you 
know, mud fudded, right? Looks a little bit short and looks a bit very old, doesn't it? I mean, it just looks very old. Got the patina, everything smashed up in the background. Looks like they're uncovering buried buildings. I've got columns here. It's going down below. We've got land level up here. Got some pillars. So, but the Arc de Triomphe does not look like that today. I mean, this is what it was again, and this is the problem. This is what it was marked as the Arc de Triomphe. But I don't believe, you know, the Arc de Triomphe is now on a flat place. So that that could be, you know, that's I'm just saying what it was marked as. But this is the thing with pictures. All we know about them really is what someone has written, you know, a date and a name. So I'm thinking this is probably not the one in, in Paris, France. Mainly because look at these stairs going up the back. Right? This is not in, because now it's in the middle of a big roundabout, isn't it? And this is very flat. So this, I don't know, these arches are everywhere. So that it really could be anywhere. Uh, Castle Ha in... Utrecht in the Netherlands. I just thought this was a very cool castle, right? And again, like built into the into the lake. How will they, how do they build so many things into water? Or is that just because the levels have changed at some point? I'm not sure, but this is pretty cool. You know, got our geomancy going on, you know, geometry put into the earth. Um, and I think that's to do with earth energies, right? Uh, this is the, uh, obviously a drawing, Colosseum Rome from the 1500s. And it just looks smashed. All right, everything under mud here. This isn't it, but it's another building looking extremely old and covered in mud. Uh, and if you look at Rome around the, the late 1800s, it was... It was destroyed, man. But that's not what we're told in the narrative. I have to do a video on that, actually. Here's another one of the Colosseum. And this is, or it's dated 1760 to 1780. And what's in the middle here, right? But a big statue type thing. That's not there anymore. And of course, they tell us this was, you know, built so that people could go and kill each other in there entertainment right, do you really think that's what it was I mean I'm sure that's not what its first use was but you know in this age they tell us that they give us that narrative because it's the precursor to you know all, all the sports ball right all these these sports and different things that, that are, are done in stadiums you know, to get people to focus on things and put their energy into things. And they're, they're basically rituals. Uh, so this is Port Amsterdam. If you haven't seen it before, New York City. When it was New Amsterdam, I'm, no doubt. The Nuit Riviere, the city of New Amsterdam on the island of Manhattan in the colony of the New Netherlands around 1660 and this see this the wall right we see you know obviously the round star cities these walls with these bastions is what they call them coming out of them these pointy bits this is now wall street that's what wall street is it's called wall street because there literally was a wall there gone now but but that's what there was and a star fort all right, in New York City. Uh, some giant um, terraces. These are, and I think it, some people have sort of shown these and gone, oh, look, they're steps for giants and these are steps for humans. But I think these are, you know, for growing food. But what I find interesting is this up on the top of a mountain, man. How did they build this? How did they get the materials up here? And then and then build it so well again, you know, it's built pretty pretty perfectly, right? Like it, it's the engineering and the building that that is just like, how did they do that? 
but I don't think these are steps for giants and these, you know, next are steps for humans. Again, like, how did they do this? Look at this. This is um, a fortress on Mount Shakruf in Yemen. And look at this, man. What? Like, how? How did they build that? Like, it's just, and, and why? I mean, I don't know. You know, obviously the narrative is, you know, because everyone wants to kill everyone, right? So it was for safety and, you know, defense and all this kind of stuff. But really, you're going to build this for defense? You could just build a fence for defense. <laughs> but um, that's just crazy, right? Crazy. Rome, 1748. So clearly already built out an old world city. Obviously, this is just a map. Got some of the, the pictures down here of what it looked like. And you can see the people here. Look at the size of this fountain compared to the people. You know, the size of this column and these buildings. Right? These are people. I mean, look at this completely giant sized city in Rome. Right? This is what it was. And they're sort of showing a bit of the destruction here, broken column and stuff. Like I said, if you if you look at Rome in the late eighteen hundreds, man, it was destroyed, and this looks to me like it was this was a city from a different age, made by different people, bigger people with different, more advanced tech, and their civilization, you know, was wiped out through the catastrophes, through the resets, and it was found, right, founded. And here we see that wall, just like we saw in New York, on Wall Street, right? Same kind of wall with these bastions coming out, surrounding what I call star cities. And up here, the Vatic, uh, Vatican, the Vatican. So this is this is the Vatican, right? And it, it's a star fort. It's completely surrounded by a wall. You can see the star citadel here. And that's what Rome is, man. So with the giant buildings and then the star forts and star cities, it looks like it's been inhabited over different ages. Uh, another one of Rome. This is uh, 1933, so before World War II, but this would have been under Mussolini, the dictator. But, I mean, again, look at this. I mean, clearly, right? that's Rome, Roman. That's why we call it Roman architecture, I guess, Greco-Romano. But all cleaned up by the 1930s. But 50 years prior, did not look like this, man. This is Shazda Garden. Um, it's in, Pers what is it, a Persian garden in the heart of the, I mean, look at this. Like little world, it's not even a city, right? I don't know what it is. But isn't it interesting? It's just completely green, flourishing, big trees, and just surrounded by desert, right? The rest is deserted. But this, looking very much like what we see everywhere, right? With the palaces and in different cities, these big boulevards you know, that go down to building to building. So probably the remains of something that was a much bigger, you know, either structure or city or whatever, but I doubt this was built just as this. And, you know, maybe it's not so green because some of the water, the old world water systems are still working. This is in Sydney. Sydney, Australia, right? What do you think? Look a bit like a sphinx maybe? Not sure exactly where it is, but I've heard a bit of talk about it lately. It's down near on one of the beaches, but that looks does look sphinx-like to me. It definitely looks like a face. These were taken in Tasmania this month, and you know people would be told this is the the Southern Lights, right? The Aurora Australis. Look at that. 
what do you think this is and how come we're starting to see these in places we didn't used to see them and they're much bigger and brighter is it telling us something's changing you know is are we coming to the end of an age and the beginning of a new one is this plasma maybe plasma apocalypse Pretty cool, right? Aurora Australis. Uh, Buffalo Savings Bank. Uh, clearly built as a bank. Again, look at the size here. Look at the people. This is, I mean, look, actually, uh, it might be two levels or probably one, but just with a balcony, like one story, like compared to these people. Look at these ladies here. They don't even come up to the base here. So again, looking like an you know building from another age. I mean, much bigger than this one next to it, right? This one's three stories. Doesn't even come up to the top of the first story on this. And this is all they need to do. Put a plaque on there, Buffalo Savings Bank. And then suddenly it's a bank. All right, then they put their story up, and you know up here, bank, right? That, and and that this is what they do, right? They put up their little symbols and signs and writing, but it doesn't mean it's a bank or it was built for a bank. It means it was found and someone's using it as a bank. Uh, I've, yeah, this is uh, New York. I didn't realise there's a canal street in New York and it used to be a canal and they filled it in and made it canal street and, and we've sort of, theorized about this before is this what many of the streets are that they just gone around and filled in the canals because we look at the old world cities what we can find the old maps and that and it looks like there were just canals everywhere like everything was kind of like venice all right so they filled them all in this one they definitely filled in and turned into a street canal street oh and my pictures have frozen all right, I'm just going to have to stop sharing and reopen. Uh, where are we? Let's say Canal Street. Oh, we're almost at the end. A few more. Uh, the gate at Angkor Thom in Cambodia. Look at that. Dude up here, I'm not sure if he's got three legs or what's going on. Or that kind of looks like fingers, doesn't it? But again, like, how did they make this kind of stuff? This one, and in Angkor what you see it a lot too, it looks like they're, they're different parts, right? That It looks like they're, they're cast or whatever, made in parts and then assembled, right? I can't, it looks like there's a crack there. It's hard to see if they're all joined there, but definitely when you come up here, you can see joins here, right? Joins on the top. And, yeah, if you look at Angkor Wat itself, uh, you see it also in, like, Karnak in Egypt. It looks like they're all, yeah, just, just that they make, like, these big temples and statues in, in parts, and then they assemble them. And you see it in pillars a lot as well, in the pillars that we see. This one, don't know if it's real, but it says the giant that helped build the tunnel in this was in south america oh hang on sorry i'm not showing all right okay thank you <laughs> okay now i will show again <laughs> sorry dude <laughs> sorry to you all okay let's go back so this was a canal street that i was talking about this is canal street ah it's just a picture in new york and yeah so this was a canal that got filled in and it's now Canal Street, and it's frozen again. Okay, this time I will not forget to share. Let me do this. Um, okay, we'll go on to the Angkor Wat. Oh, okay, share. Sorry about that. Okay, this is the one that was from Angkor Tom, built in sections that I was talking about. You can kind of see, you know, there's different sections here that look like they've been made separately and then stacked up. You can, you know, this is obviously a bit old and worn up here, but I mean, this is clearly different rocks being stacked up, but 
See how they're all different shapes and sizes and things? It looks like a lot of this stuff. Oh, here we go. So here's a face. All right, and you can see it's made up of sections that have like been pieced together like a jigsaw puzzle. And, you know, I've kind of theorized, is that what they do with buildings as well? Because all these buildings, they all have the same features, but um, that they're all different. You know, they're all slightly different, uh, but they all have the same features. So is, are they machines? And they're like, to build this machine, you need, you know, to, to get what you want out of the machine, you, this one, you need three domes and 15 columns and, you know, whatever. And you get the parts and then put the building together but, you know same kind of theory but that's what this looks like and you can see this kind of stuff there's another face up here okay and you can see this is all made out of sections uh, like a jigsaw puzzle so is that what we're looking at because you know they then we have the red brick which is obviously different i don't know where the the trillion red bricks or however many came from but you definitely see this kind of style um, throughout Southeast Asia, Egypt, places like that. And this is the giant. So again, don't know if it's real. It does look like an old photo, but, you know, AI is around now and, you know, photo manipulation, all this kind of stuff. But it's basically saying that this was a giant that was helping them build tunnels in South America. Right? These tunnels through mountains, right? And I mean, I don't know if they were building any of them you know, in the 1800s, maybe clearing them out. But, you know, interesting, right? And this is the Vatican again in Rome. And it's just old world buildings, obviously, everywhere, right? They've just taken it over. And, of course, these obelisks, they try and tell us that they all came from Egypt, right? And they just ship them around the world, right? Because it's so easy to move them and ship them and then to re-erect them. That sounds like a story to me. But this place, as you can see by the size of the people, this is a huge structure. Huge. And looks like we've got one more. Oh, okay. So this is in Utah. I think it's called, uh, I think it's in Zion. But look at this. This is a cliff. You can see this tunnel and this is a close-up. Uh, we've clearly got block work here. Clearly got man-made, you know, arched ceiling. We see these arched ceilings a lot. See, that, you know, all the train tunnels and stuff have them. Most of them are brick. But what do you think that is? Like, well, what do you think's inside this mountain? Right, because it looks like whatever it was, <clears throat> excuse me, was covered up by something. Could be meltage. I don't know. Now, I haven't seen any evidence of stone melting and then running and covering things. I've definitely never seen any evidence of, of bricks getting heated up and expanding. Um, but who knows what the, it looks like. Whatever this is, whatever's covered this, has cracked off and exposed this entrance. So what's in there, I wonder? Who knows? So there you go. That's the end of my photo. So sorry about the little um, glitch there. Oh, Pamela Swan. Woohoo. How are you going? Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah, the Vatican. It does look like a massive sun dial for sure, man. Um, anyway, those massive structures were built with giant-sized ceilings and doors was by the occupants. Um Yeah, by the people who use them, yeah. So, yeah, they were probably bigger than us. I mean, that's what we think. But, you know, we don't know. It's all still theories. Um, they may have been bigger because they were machines and they needed to be big. I don't know. I don't know. Um, taking righteous pride in their work. I have a theory on what blasted those tunnels. Oh, well, I hope you put out a video. Um, on it and Jim does have a channel if you didn't know Jim Dillinger whack that into YouTube and you'll find his channel he does some really good research really good videos go check him out give him a like subscribe all that kind of stuff seeker of truths was at the cave entrance by Lake Powell 
I'm not sure. It just basically says, um, what did it say? It said it was in Utah, Zion, Utah. Um, well, you know, that, that's definitely something I've thought about late for dinner. Thanks for being here. Yeah, like is this a, a completely created realm? Like was it like built like this and then, and then the first beings put in it? And, you know, if that happened, was are we the first beings and all this other stuff is just backdrop, right? Just, just you know, to make it interesting, right? Give us rabbit holes to jump down and do things. Um, it's, yeah, I've definitely thought about that. Oh, there you go. Right by the side. Is that the same person saying that? Yeah, Secret of Truth. Okay. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the area, but... Anyone who is, um, Lake Powell, the cliff by Lake Powell, if you're nearby, go check it out. Get some footage if you can. Get some photos. Um, I mean, yes and no. You know, I mean, clearly we have, you know, we have pictures and we have, you know, stellas and reliefs. You know, there's like that big footprint. I think that's in South Africa, and there's little bits and pieces around, but but you know, it, what if it's a created realm and it was just put there as backdrop? You know, there, there's always more, more than one perspective. I'm definitely not someone who believes in ultimate truths. I don't think they exist. I think it's all perspective. So it can definitely look like that, um, but empirical evidence, I'm not sure. Like like we we just don't know because you know, really, unless you were there. And you experience it, can you really know? Oh, no worries, Jim. No worries at all. Love your work. Johnny, how are you going from Peru? Thanks for joining us. Um, John Henry made tunnels. That steel driving man, the steel driving man. Don't know who that is and not sure what you saying he was making what railway tunnels and things through mountains i think it's the divorce right <laughs> the ones from the lord of the rings they made all the tunnels who knows who knows mount rushmore has always left me scratching my head yeah it's an interesting one to look into it's definitely everything's got anomalies when you look into the man um utah's close to bethlehem Ooh, usa old world okay it's, it's very interesting how they repeat these names everywhere, isn't it? All these, you know, could they not come up with new ones? Like Australia started off with New Holland because obviously the Dutch, Dutch India, uh, what, Dutch East Trading Company was everywhere. So everything was, you know, Dutch. New York was New Amsterdam and all this kind of stuff. Holla from New Hampshire. Sun being good. Thank you for being here. New Hampshire, man, that's way, way up north, right, in the cold. Sounds cold. Guess we will see when the phoenix arrives. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, we will if it arrives. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I know Jason's done a lot of very good work on that, but it, it could all be, you know, what if it is all a backdrop? And, you know, we can't prove that, that all of us weren't put here five years ago right with with just a very good elaborate backdrop uh, because like i said earlier this it's all all the world's a stage man it's just a movie so you know everything's up for debate as far as i'm concerned um da -da -da. hi i'm a d6 yeah six kings yeah vikings uh, da -da, Johnny Lambert, how you going? Mr. Obvious, hello, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, Hippie. If anyone wants to come and join us in Mullaney, uh, wow, in five days, I'm going to be back in Australia. I'm going to be there. Um, we, we've set up everything. We've got a hall. We've got the camping organised. Come up and join us. Two nights camping out and a Saturday show. And Dale Holmes is confirmed. <laughs> Kind of said he was before he knew, but um, he's definitely going to get up and have a few words on stage. He's going to join us. So come and meet your tribe. 
Um, I've even I put some links when I finish this underneath. I, I forgot them all, but I've just started up a group as well. Um, if anyone's looking for a lift or can give anyone a lift up to Mullaney, um, there's a group on WhatsApp that you can go and and talk to other people uh, about that with. So there you go. Secret of truth. I'm going up there to get fair, man. Yeah, let well, yeah, let me know if you do a video or whatever on it. Let, I'd like to see it. I'm a D. How you going? Thanks for being here. Um, the Smithsonian. <laughs> yeah, man. Of course they don't. Um, they, they're throwing all, all the giants in the ocean, right? But again, I can't prove that as a story. Um, you know, everything's for, for contemplation, right? The problem with for me is, is when we we charge something as true or false, we you know as positive or negative, right or wrong. We, we, we close ourselves off from any other, um, you know, knowledge on that topic, right? So if everything was built by giants, say, and that's what we believe 100%, we, we, that's positive charge, that's now in charge of us. If we, if we make that a truth, it, it now rules us because we, we can't ever go back and, and question that narrative. So that, to me, is the problem with, with saying things are definite. Because we don't know. We really just don't know. Um, oh, thank you. I'm glad you're here too, Jackie. Uh, Jim, I reckon it was compressed oxygen and hydrogen in canisters in exact quantities. When detonated, it produced huge quantities of water. Interesting. Yeah, man. Let me know when the video comes out. Um, da, 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 John Henry beat the machine, but died after. Okay. So check him out. Um, we can't spend it all of eternity in spirit for exactly right. That's exactly right, man. And that's that this thing about, you know, heaven, like that, there's, well, that, you know, there's a, there's a heaven like kind of story in most religions. Like when you die, you go to heaven and, Okay, so what's heaven? Well, you just, you be with God. Okay, for how long? For eternity. What do I do? You just feel the love of God. Really? That's it? That sounds pretty boring, right? We need something to do. We need to be able to experience things. And that's why we need the backdrop. We need the stories. We need things to interest us, you know, so that we can learn and we can get perspective. We can, you know, understand what we like and we dislike and we can, you know, have relationships and conversations and all this kind of stuff. That's why we're here. Why? Because otherwise it would be boring as crap. I mean, seriously, think about it. What is sitting in heaven for eternity, feeling God's love? What does that even mean? Like, like, really? So, yeah, I, I totally agree. Totally agree, late for dinner. Um, yeah, man, discernment of filter. Use your discernment. Oh, thank you, Dan. Thank you. I'm enjoying my time here. Yep, I agree. Yep, I totally agree, man. It is. Especially at the moment, right? Time is, is disappearing fast, man. Yeah, our perceptions are all up for grabs. I agree. Like, let's just, you know, keep questioning, keep moving forward. And, and like I said, like, don't don't give don't give thoughts and concepts charge over you. Don't put them in charge because you, all you're doing is stopping your progress forward, right? Um, oh, thank you very much, Dan. Um, we're here to learn and grow. I agree, totally, man, totally, and have a bit of fun along the way, hopefully. And, you know, and if if you don't believe all the all the narratives about it, then then hopefully you'll have more fun, right? That's why they. You know, we're in a negative cycle. You know, this is a sine wave, right? Like this realm seems to work on sine wave, the sine wave pattern up and down, waves, right? Wave motion, energy, you know, resets, all this kind of stuff. And at the moment, we seem to be in the more negative of the cycle, but that's going to switch back to the positive. But so that's why we have negative entities in charge, in charge, right? Charge at the moment. Still, there is curvature and noticing. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kim. Thank you for being here. 
<laughs> yeah, I thought I was going, hang on. Oh my God, Apple Billy, he's gone back to being a Glover. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, missing link, right? How long have they been spinning that story? We definitely came from, from apes, man. We definitely, evolution, Darwinian, woohoo, it's definitely the truth. And we'll just, we'll get back to you with the missing link, right? We've only been looking for it for 150 years plus. No evidence, but just believe us. It's coming up. It'll be there soon. All right. Um, so there you go. Thank you all for being here. Oh, my gosh, you got all these, oh, so many comments. All right, still 250 of you watching. Thank you all. Two on Facebook as well. Um, I appreciate you all being here. Hope you enjoyed that little romp through history. Um, like I said, I'm gonna when I get off, I'm gonna whack the links below for the um Malani event, the Bosnia Pyramid Tartaria trip, uh, and a few other bits and pieces. So go check them out. And yes, thank you all for being here. Stay awesome, and I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.